Morgan and I chose to attend the S11 protest for personal reasons. We believe there was a valid case for raising a voice against the WEF and its delegates. In the end, we decided against active participation in the blockade and chose to document the actions of both sides whilst voicing our personal objections. With those intentions, we took our cameras down to film the police build-up on Sunday night. Like many of the other protesters, we believe the major issues at stake were third world debt, international trade practices, the effects of globalisation on local trade and employment, the environment, child labour and the widening gulf between rich and poor. These are global issues affecting millions worldwide. After initial victories turning back delegates by entirely peaceful means, there was inevitable confrontation, which most officers dealt with in a responsible and lawful manner, removing protesters without resorting to excessive violence, despite the full hardiness of one delegate who attempted to drive alone through hundreds of protesters. I'm with the CFMU. We're trying to keep a bit of order around the place, mate. Right? Hey, 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 Suddenly, the tactics changed. clearly stated in the Victoria Police Manual operating instructions that the use of batons in a crowd situation involves a high risk of injury to innocent people and, quote, should be used only as a last resort to overcome violent opposition to lawful arrest, unquote. As a general proposition, it is considered undesirable to use batons in a crowd situation involving women and children. Where's your union? Where's your dignity? Where's your soul? Where's your dignity? Where's your union? Tuesday morning saw protester numbers significantly down on Monday. A small group of protesters sat at one of the entrances, backs turned to police and, at ten past seven, it would become both ugly and personal. Without warning, the police attacked, batons drawn. The lack of police identification gave many protesters the feeling that, regardless of their actions, violence would be used against them. What are you doing to him? That's my brother! I'm doing all of this! Police outnumbered protesters at least five to one, and at no stage did they attempt to arrest anyone. What's your name tag? You don't have to answer to anyone, do you? Some police were obviously distressed at being ordered to use excessive force against peaceful protesters. The majority of these had the courage to wear the name tags they were legally required to wear. The good actions of some police helped to calm frayed nerves. However, there were still elements of the police force that were barely controllable threatening to further assault members of the general public. The peaceful protest would result in over 300 people injured, with around 50 requiring hospitalisation. After a relatively quiet morning, tempered by echoes of the previous night's violence, a peaceful march was conducted through the streets of Melbourne's CBD. Tell us who they are, we'll let you through. ID? You should lie, I didn't see you very well. I saw... Has anyone got some Coca-Cola? At this stage, these four plainclothes detectives had not been threatened in any way, and there was no one behind the car. They could have reversed out. They chose not to. Despite the criminal nature of the hit and run, protesters remained peaceful to the very end. Their message, thanks to the violent acts perpetrated by rogue elements of the Victoria Police, was seen and heard around the world.